Welcome back to New to Medical Device Sales. I am your host, Jacob McLaughlin, and today we are bringing you a guest who has a wealth of knowledge. Not only has this guest been in the industry for 25 years, they also have their own podcast, Ortho Idea. They have their own company where it's Virtual Sales RX teaching sales. And then also they run their own distributorship called Extremity Surgical. So with all that in the mouthful, so the person you're going to be learning for today, we're happy to welcome Eric Anderson to the podcast. Eric, welcome to New to Medical Device Sales. Hey, Jacob. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, man. I love your podcast. Love listening. You give so many great, valuable tips, and uh, I'm uh, humbled to be on here. Very grateful. Thank you. No, we're so excited to have you. And again, same, right back at you. I've been able to listen to your podcast, learn from your podcast, um, and just been fortunate to, to connect with you and continue to grow our relationships, just learning, you know, how can we help more and more people? Um, it's, it's been great. But, you know, I, I said a mouthful at the beginning of all the different things you and you are a veteran in this industry, 25 plus years, you've held almost every single job that you can imagine in medical device sales from, you know, a sales rep to the district manager, and then to owning your own distributorship and running that, which we always get questions about what's the difference between a distributorship and a W2, right? Sure. And so would love for you just to kind of give your own little background of who you are um, and, and your experience and dive in there. Yeah, absolutely. I will, uh, I'll uh, keep it short and sweet here. I, uh, so I, I got into medical device sales and I started with Synthes, which probably everybody here knows as Depew Synthes. But back in the day, it was called Synthes and uh, I was a trauma rep. And so I had the, the, uh, the fortunate to, uh, opportunity to meet a district manager. And the reason I'm telling this story is, is because you never know where you might meet your future boss. Never might know. So uh, I had a, I had decided one day with my wife who I just married to that we were going to open a wine bar. And so we dropped our jobs and opened a wine bar. And I think I worked a hundred plus hours per week. And I literally think the first week I made $7 and, and I guess I'm one of the rare ones cause I made some money. And so we were working like dogs and I was like, uh, did we make the right choice here? And ironically, my district manager to be came in and was one of my customers and he kind of talked to me and said hey do you think you might get back into sales do you think you might do that because i before i was in sales and in, in, in computer sales back then software and uh he was like hey would you think about getting anyway so long story short i got back in but i say that story because and how i got into medical device sales is literally he was my customer sitting across the bar from me as i was trying to pour him different glasses of wine. That's really how it all started. So I went to Synthes. I was there for about seven or eight years, um, became a sales trainer, did the, you know, obviously carried the bag for that time, was in the trauma division, uh, moved from Synthes to Smith and Nephew, took several different positions there, field marketing director, district manager, region vice president. And so I did all those and got in that, in that time frame. obviously hired hundreds of different sales people, um, at that point in time, then moved to some different companies along the way, all in district, all in managerial roles is where yeah. I was. And so at one point in time, I just decided, hey, I'm going to go out and become, do my own independent thing. I've always been entrepreneurial. And so uh, made my exit out of the corporate side of uh, medical device and into the independent distribution marketing and started Extremity Surgical. And that's where I've been doing that now for about three and a half years, uh, as well as uh, virtual sales RX, which I'm sure we'll talk about amongst other things, yeah. um, podcasts and things of that nature. So I've gotten my, uh, I've gotten my, I got my background in medical device sales, uh, and used that and kind of moved into other things as I've moved on in my career. So that's, I love it. that's the, the, uh, the thumbnail version of my career. I love it. And again, what you guys will hear is it just continues to go. And the thing I love about your story, Eric, is that entrepreneur heart, right? Like that's what most people I don't think understand is, you know, I hear so many people that are like, oh, I just want to be a sales rep, which I'm going to put this out there. There's nothing wrong with that. But no. what most people don't understand is when you're coming in to run a business, you're running a territory, you're running your own business. You're Absolutely. doing everything to run your business. And so this is why I tell everyone, it was actually the advice I got from, I was very fortunate. One of my uh, guys that I ended up training when I was a personal trainer was a uh, venture capitalist. And he, I just started talking to him about finances and all this stuff. And he was the one who encouraged me to go into medical device sales. 
And his advice was like, hey, you're going to go in. You're going to learn sales, which you need in every business. And every business, you need sales and marketing. Those are the two things that are going to drive it. And he's like, you could go in, learn sales, how to sell. And then he's like, and you would get that experience. And then if you do well, you'll get some capital and then some money. And then if you wanted to, you could eventually go start your own business, right? Because you would learn that. And so the reason I just say that is most reps don't go in with that mindset. And if you actually just are looking at like, wow, I am running my own company because, you know, when I was at Medtronic, yeah, they knew, J- they knew Medtronic, but it was Jacob. It was Jacob was the Medtronic rep, right? It's your name on the line when you're running that business. And so I just love that you mentioned that because again, what most reps don't think about is I'm already doing it. I'm just sure. getting actually the perfect umbrella to learn it and get paid to do it and not have to worry about all the expenses. But if you actually start taking oh, this is what this would cost. Oh, I travel. Oh, I do my meal reimbursement. If I actually own my own business, aka now you have the distributorship, now you start to see, oh, this is what it would be. And there's, oh, maybe I can make some money doing this on a different end. Um, sure. and so I think that's a good p- jumping point is we'll, we'll talk about what you looked for in reps when you were hiring, but what made you make the jump from being a W-2 to a distributorship? And can you kind of explain some of the differences maybe that you see in that world? Yeah, so I was a district manager, and um, uh, and and I just made the decision, and that I I watched the different ways that different distributors were doing business, and I saw the really good ones, and I saw a whole bunch of others that were not very good at what they did, and I went, yeah. okay, wait a minute, let's let. And so I started talking to some of these distributors, and really we had great dialogue, and I decided, you know what this is what I want to do. I'm an entrepreneur. I want to do this. And, and I, you know, it's funny as I always have been an entrepreneur, except in my medical device piece of my life, I was like, I was, but you know what? I wasn't, I didn't have my own organization, my own company. And so, cause I always worked for companies. And so I just said to myself, listen, you can do a really good job of this. There's certain just, you know, core competencies that you have that you can utilize in being a distributor, independent, utilize the, utilize those and really, you know, obviously a lot of hard work and, and, you know, put systems and processes in place to really be a, a favored partner with companies and yep. represent their products correctly. And, and with obviously with the, with the, the right, uh, with the, with the right um, system in place and the, in the, in the right framework. So that really is why I decided to do it. And I, I'm, I'm sorry. I wish, I wish I would have done it 15, 20 years ago, but. And I, and I hear that from a lot of my distributors that I talk to, cause you know, yeah. I've had friends and buddies who, one of my craziest ones is I know somebody who, you know, worked at an organization for two years, were just an associate. And then they saw the opportunity, went and started a distributorship. And now they make a multi-million dollar <laughs> distributorship because right. they took advantage and they saw that opportunity, entrepreneurial mind and saw it. Um, so I see that can real quick, can you kind of explain, because this is always the hey, what's the difference between a W-2 and a distributorship, right? And I always am like, oh, an LLC, you have your own, right? You're not getting paid taxes, right? They're not, it's not a safe thing. A lot of there's sometimes there's commission and sometimes there's a quota, sometimes there's not. Can you just kind of real quick, quick bullet points of what's the difference of you running an LLC in your own company as a distributor and you would hire those 1099 reps, what they would see there compared to, like you said, if they went and worked at the Pew Synthes and it was a W-2 job and they're paying them that. Yeah. So you, you're going to, you know, if you're just starting out you're going to find both of these positions that are available to you, I would just encourage everyone, just like you go and research going to work for Stryker or Medtronic, do that with the distributors because there are distributors that are fantastic organizations and a lot more fun to work with. Yep. Just like there is on the W2 side. I mean, we all experience, so there's no real negatives or, or, I, I don't find there to be real differences unless you're with someone or an organization that's terrible. And that's just the way it is with being a W-2 as well. Yep. It's the same thing. And so as a 1099, all you are is you're an independent agent. You have your own business and you get paid. Your commissions come to you. And then I, I am going to make this disclaimer. I am not accountant. I am not a CPA. My advice is only anecdotal. Do not take it. Everything you get paid is the dollars and then you take your expenses out. You get paid first. I I really, really, really like that, that I get paid first yep. and my expenses come out of that and my my taxes and everything else. I figure out how I'm going to structure how where my dollars go. I was a W-2 for 20 something years. 
I obviously liked it. I obviously made great money doing it. I like this model better. Some people like being a W2. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. You know, I, I did it for a long, long, long time. Exactly. And, and so I I just so when when somebody says, Oh, I'm looking to be a distributor rep, great, man. Go look for that. Go, go talk to that job. If they're a professionally well-run organization, that is a great spot for you. Yep. But just make sure they are, just like yeah. with a W2 job. And that's the biggest thing is like, everyone will be like, oh, how do I find distributors? Like we talk about this all the time, how you're utilizing LinkedIn. We talk about it on my pod or on podcast and in our course, we talk about, hey, because there's different opportunities, right? As you will know, because really almost anybody can start a distributorship if they want. But to, sure. your, po to your point, that's where you can see a really good one and a really bad one. And you can see it. The only reason I really wanted to touch on that is because most of the time I see people, they're like, I want the safe option. Let me just yeah. tell you real quick what the safe option is. Everybody thinks it is. It's the W-2 where you don't have to think about it. They pay your taxes. They give you a car or a car stipe and you do that. That doesn't happen in the 1099 world. This is why I personally, being a business owner, learning all this stuff, I just like Eric, love the 1099 world. Again, I, and you're talking to a person who is still a W-2 employee as well, right? So yeah. I can sit here and tell you the differences. But for example is, is, you make money on a W-2, that's taxed right away, government going straight to the government. And then after tax dollars is what you're using to buy stuff. And guess what? You're going to go buy food, that's taxed. Going to go buy a car, that's taxed. Going to go buy anything, it's all taxed already. So you get taxed from the W-2 and then you're getting taxed on everything you already buy compared to what Eric said. And again, I am not a CPA. This is my own thoughts. Do not take it as it is. But compared yep. to if you are a 1099, you have your own LLC. Well, guess what? There are tax write-offs. Hence why everybody's like, how do all these people drive nice cars? but still have money, right? Well, if you don't know the tax laws, you can look and see, you can actually go drive a car with your B4 tax money, buy it, and it actually brings down your tax taxable income if you have your own LLC working this stuff. And so there's all these different things. That's why I always tell you guys what Eric's saying is do your research, do your homework, but I can sit here and tell you, this was advice I got from somebody and I just want to share it. If you're going to go work for a W-2 employee, expect to get about 55% of what they say, right? So for example, if they say you're going to get 10 grand a month, because I'm living proof, I've, I've experienced it, 10 grand a month, call my boys, get ready, we're going to go eat out, it's going to be awesome, bam. 10 grand, and then it turns into you got $5,200, $5,500 after taxes, 401k, insurance, and all this stuff. Again, that's great money. I'm not sitting here and telling you, oh, five grand, you can't live off that, right? That's horrible. But the reason I'm just saying that is when you get told that you're going to make 10, 15, 20, $30,000, and it's about half of that, that's when you're like, wait, what? So I yeah. just want to always put that compared to, you know, there's that. And there's always normally with a W-2, there's a quota compared to, I had a buddy who was working at 1099. And this, again, it's always going to be different with the companies you go to. He was 24 years old, making over 20K a month. He had no quota because it was just, what is that doctor producing? And you're going to get 16% of it, right? So again, these are the things I want you guys to think about because this is what a lot of people never think of and they don't know. And I'll just be honest. I have reps that have been in for four years who are going to learn from us right now that they had no idea what we just talked about. And they're like, wait, what? Because they've right. just never done the research. Um, so that's what I would just encourage you. But I really appreciate you going into detail, Eric, because that is one of the sure. most common questions I get asked is about the distributorship W-2 model. Yeah, absolutely. So then, so you go from there, you were a district manager and you hired hundreds of people. Yep. I already know this is going to be the most common question. Eric, what do you look for in your people to get hired so I can get hired in medical device sales? Yeah. So I had an interesting hiring process for myself. I mean, I, you know, there's, there's the, the boilerplate who I looked for. I mean, I look, you know, I obviously it, things for me, if they worked a job in college, if they actually, I'm kind of, I'm rewinding back from even the whole college thing on some things because I, eh, Anyway, I we could go in. That could be a whole other podcast. That's a, that's, that's a whole I, other podcast by itself with a thousand episodes. It, exactly, it is. So I, I am, I'm, I'm questioning whether that whole world. Anyway, so my boilerplate was, and still is to a certain point, is when I look to hire somebody, you know, college degree and or relative work experience. I did either or. Um, you know, did they work through college? Did they have another job? Did they? support themselves you know if they were a college athlete great i kind of that was another check for me kind of all the things that show me that they have the discipline to do this job because this job is 
all about having discipline. If yes. you don't have the discipline, and, and, and you may not, and that's fine. I mean, it, it's nothing against you. It's just the reality is somebody's going to call. Somebody called Jacob. He just told me at 6 a.m. this morning, and there was a fire drill. Well, if you don't have the discipline to, you know, not roll in at 445 that morning after a great night, you know, and you don't answer the bell, you don't have the discipline to do it and you can't do it. And that's just the reality of it. Um, so I also look for people who had a tremendous amount of flexibility and, and adapt adaptability. Yes. And people say, what do you mean by adaptability? Well, I would often in the hiring process and to this day, guys who are probably listening to this, who worked for me are going to be like, I knew you did that to me, but uh, I, I would do the old, Hey, let's uh, meet at 10 a.m. on Tuesday. And at about 8.30 a.m., I go, dude, I can't meet. I'm sorry. I got stuff going on. And people would be like, oh, well, oh, well, okay. But the ones who go, okay, great. Let's reschedule. I have time later this afternoon at four. Does that work for you? I'm like, oh, yeah, major check. You know what? Hey, 10 o'clock can work. Let's watch how you you know, deal that. And people to this day kind of say, I remember when you did that to me. And Because it, it, it's just because that's what our life is. That's oh. it. it constantly readjusting constantly preach that one more time because like that's the this is the thing two things i gotta just point out real quick number one if you can't do the discipline people are like but i want it i don't like welcome to the world i want a billion dollars right but just because you want it doesn't mean you get it just because you can't show up and you can't do it maybe this isn't the career for you because this is everyone who calls me hey jacob i heard you can make this much money can you help me and they want it for free they want to always can you give me a free advice? I'm like, Hey, we have 150 free episodes. Go listen to those. Uh, I just want you to tell me right now, don't do this career. Like go kick rocks, please. Because yeah, yeah. you guys won't be the person that needs to be like the amount of times I've gotten at five 30 bells going crazy. You have to be able to handle it and you have to have the discipline. Like Eric said, and I always tell people, I tell our course, you don't have to get ready if you stay ready. Right? So there's those pieces to it. So there's the discipline. And most people, we live in a world where if I want it, I get it right. Bull crap. That's not the real world, right? No. Just because you want it doesn't mean it's going to happen. So if you don't put in all the work with most, most of the people aren't, you're not going to get the job, right? And that's what they're finding out. Number one. Number two, exactly what you just said, the adaptability, it all goes back to selfishness because most people will then call me and then complain. The manager told me they were going to meet at 10 and they didn't. And I was like, you don't know. It's a test. Yeah. Right. No. Because they're like, as he told me and I'm holding up my end. Well, guess what? You're just a person trying to get a job. If you just heard what I said, Eric's running multiple companies, has different things going on. You wanting to talk to him is the last worry about him or about about on his mind. Talking about like, oh, here, let me help you get a job, right? Because guess what? Same thing if you guys are going through the interview process with Eric and he does that, guess what? He has 50 other people applying who's doing the same thing. So the moment you start complaining and be like, "Eh," bam, you're out. So Actually, again, you, should, you should feel you should feel great about that. That means that they think you're in the mix. You know? Exactly. Because <laughs> they actually thought of you to text yeah. you compared to I've seen managers, one of our course uh, people, they just got hired. But one of the places they didn't get hired at, it was because the manager ghosted them, literally told them they were going. And then they checked in the day of and the person's like, oh, no, I didn't make it out. I'm actually not coming. You, I told her right then and there, you're not a serious candidate. Yeah, because yeah. that person's not going right. So it's just. It's how that world works. But I, I'm so glad you touched on those two points because so many people, again, we, we are in a very big world of entitlement. Everyone oh, yeah. thinks it and they want it. And they, if I want it, I should get it. And everyone hears our success stories where we've had construction workers. We have EMTs. We have people who don't have that background. But the difference between those people who join our course and get hired, they are go-getters. They're a thousand percent committed and they will do whatever it takes to be successful compared to the majority of people who listen to this podcast are toying with the idea and they're like, eh, if it works out, that will be great. I can sit here and tell you a thousand percent. If that's your mindset, you will never break into this industry because there's too many people that are hungry. We see it right now in our course. And I say it on every call right now, we're seeing about 500 people apply for a single job. And right now, because of the state of the world, a lot of them have medical device experience. So why would they even choose you? If you can't come in and bring the discipline, the crushing, the, the, the drive and doing all this and being adaptable, because I say this all the time, when I was doing personal training, there were so many days I had a 12 minute workout because I reached out to them and I yeah. asked for their advice. And when they called me, I just made my time available compared to now, it's hysterical. I'll be calling people and they'll be like, Hey, I'm at the gym. Can I call you back? 
I'm like, yeah, sounds great. And then I never pick up their phone calls. So if that happened to you guys and you're listening to that, guess what? Eminem, you got one shot and you missed it because you're too selfish and you're entitled to be like, oh, I'm going to do mine. But you reached out to me yeah. and asked for my free advice, right? That's yeah, going to just drop the bomb for everybody real quick. Exactly. No, you did you get it so well. You're, 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 I, I just, I had the, I think I had this conversation too much. It's like, I, and I, and I, I tell my kids, I'm like, you know what, my kid, I'm really excited for my kids because they're going to be very, they're going to be very successful yep. because they're not going to be entitled like that. So, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's preach it one more time. Cause I, I listened to the, like Joe Rogan and like, I saw Dana White and he's like, if you're even somewhat of a savage, you are going to crush the next Oh years. gosh. Yeah. You're going to be on fire. That's why I always tell people, cause I'm already working. I'm already doing it. And I'm like, people are like, aren't you worried? I'm like, why? Because now we're pushing for a four day work week. Do you think in my life I'm going to go to four days? No, yeah, everyone right. else is. Actually, and I just gained another yeah. day. Yeah, I, I I hope we go to a four day work yeah. week because I'm, I'm working double another, sales. Exactly, I'm just going to get farther ahead of everybody else because of everyone's lazy. Right, right, right. It's, exactly. That's, that's why I always just laugh. So I'm really glad you touched on that. But um, yeah, no, I would love to talk more about even your virtual RX sales and then also Ortho Idea because again, you're doing a lot and you're putting a lot of great content out to the community. To not yeah. only educate, but to help people. And I would love to just really take some time to be able to let the listeners know about what you're doing there. Yeah, sure. Thanks for thanks for allowing me to talk a little bit about that. So uh, my my uh, business partner and I, Matthew Ray Scott, developed a, a platform called Medical Sales RX. And, and I know you mentioned Virtual Sales RX, but Medical Sales RX is a platform that teaches medical salespeople to utilize personalized video uh, to develop no like, and trust you know, with busy surgeons. And so Medical Sales RX, fantastic platform, been around three and a half years. We moved it into more verticals of sales, and one of those being Virtual Sales RX. Yep. And that's our, other, our, our, our platform as well now. So, And Virtual Sales RX is, is a platform that is all about utilizing personalized video in order to attract your prospective customers and get no like and trust going and and just yep. it's it's you know as it really <laughs> we started developing these things before covid talking about it and then covid kind of went boom and then we were like well Blew okay up. we're here <laughs> <laughs> we're here guys let's let's go matthew here we are and so yeah so if if uh if you're on linkedin at all you'll see matthew ray scott out there but yeah it's been, it's been a lot of fun we've learned a lot in doing this and we've just learned that utilizing personalized video, it doesn't take the place in any way, shape, or form of calling on somebody face-to-face. -face. It doesn't at all. But I believe the days are pretty much gone of go to glory to the gatekeeper at the office, set up an appointment or a lunch with the doctor, and you know, you get 30 minutes and talk about your wares and, you know, go, 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 go and vomit information dump. I, those days are over. A hundred percent. And that's what I just wanted to touch on. This is why it's so great because like you said, number one, you only get usually get three minutes with somebody. Yeah. But number two, this is what people don't understand is when you can do the virtual, most people and a lot of the surgeons, right? And I, I want to say the younger surgeons that are up and coming and want to see the new technology and going are normally somewhat active on LinkedIn because yeah. they know it's going to drive business for them. They need it. And a lot of, this is what I'm hearing all the time when I'm going to these conferences. A lot of these surgeons are trying to build a personal brand for themselves to then go up in the societies, right? And then be able to sit on boards and be able to share their experience. The reason I'm telling you all this is because what Eric just said is, well, guess what happens when you can like their stuff? You can comment on their stuff, but then you send a video. And then guess what? You can set things up being a thousand percent virtual. So when you do have that opportunity to go and see them, maybe you're at the same conference or you're going in their area, guess what? Now you're not a, it's not a cold call. It's almost a warm call because they actually know who you are. They've probably checked out your profile a couple of times and it just leads into all this. And that's, I just wanted to hit this because we are going into a, a world of, I laugh all the time. You guys listening to this podcast, how'd you find me? You searched something, you found me on LinkedIn, you found YouTube, right? It's, that's this world, and it's no different than what the medicine world is going into because, again, I'm watching. Yeah, there's always going to be those surgeons who've been around for 20 years, and they're going to have it. But in the same respect, there's a lot of new technology that those old surgeons won't even touch that can save and do a lot of great things, and these newer surgeons are open to it. And so using the platforms that we are available to can make a huge difference. And it can, again, it's all about how are you setting yourself apart from the competitors. Right. Yep. If you're if you're literally the same and you have the same product, same price, whatever it is, but you're doing touch points like Eric just mentioned and what they offer and your other competitor is, who do they know more?
who are they more likely to have a conversation with? And it leads into that. Absolutely. So well said. And it's, it's, and that's why in medical sales RX, we just, we, with this platform that we decided, it's like, Hey, we, on our platform, we teach you how to utilize personalized videos in order to develop that, you know, scripts, what you can use. And then obviously, and then I, I teach a course on there, how to build a, a brand on LinkedIn. And I just, my, my voyage on LinkedIn, I was the guy five years ago who, yeah, well, that's where I need to have my resume there in case somebody wants to hire me, you know, and that's what people thought LinkedIn was. And so I went from having basically zero followers to now I'm, I'm you know, over 11, up to 11,000 followers. I don't tell you that to impress you. I just tell you, I produce content every day and I want to help others, you know, but also what I've done is I built a personal brand and I, I knew nothing about personal brand three years ago, three and a half years ago, but I did notice that there was a dramatic shift because of social media of how people were going to learn about others. And it happens on social media. Now, I don't know if we want to call LinkedIn social media, but let me tell you, if you kind of follow others like Omar Khatib and some of the others, he'll tell you about the engagement of what surgeons were going. It is blowing up of where yep. surgeons and, and physicians are going to get their information on LinkedIn. It is tremendous. Right so. now, it's huge. And just to your point, I, I look at LinkedIn as a social media because even though it's business, right? It's building personal brand. You're making real, like I, I can sit here and tell you I'm having conversations with surgeons because yeah. they follow me on LinkedIn, right? Yeah. And then we're able to oh, talk about too. stuff, right? Yeah. And so that's where it is. And I'm actually getting on a call with Omar right after this. And it's like, you know, we have those conversations, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a different world. It's a different changing. And even for us as companies and as we go, we know that's where the attention is going, right? And yeah. so I think Gary Vee does a great job. Again, I'm, we're all both about entrepreneurship and, and doing that. Is I love Gary, yep. Find the attention. Where's the attention at? And that's where most reps and most people are missing it. Because I can sit here and tell you, it's we, we talk about it in our course. It's, I have a whole YouTube video. If you guys go to my playlist, I took a video of when I was trying to break in, when I'm handing out my resume at a surgery center, post that yeah. on LinkedIn. It went viral. And because of that, I had four managers reach out to me because they saw my hustle, right? Yeah. They would have never known, but because I went where the video was. That's where I'm just saying, Guess what happens when you talk about like you, if you guys go to my stuff, you'll see me post about who, my company I work for and w w some of our products. You don't think some of those surgeons don't look at that stuff. You don't think some of them don't click on it and then share it to some of their colleagues. Like that's what people don't understand. And that's where I, you and I understand this, but where are sales made? It's when you're not in the room. It's when they're talking about it behind the closed doors. Yep. These are easy ways to do that. And again, we know in sales, how do you just get more touch points? Bam, right, right. you just made it easy way. And that's where I just talk with our people virtually, right? I think about the days I used to do what you were saying is I can go hit offices. It maybe it took me eight hours to go hit eight offices because they're throughout the valley and I had to be strategic where I'm going, wasting gas, wasting time compared yep, to yep. I can hit eight surgeons or 15 surgeons in 15 minutes now because yeah. of using LinkedIn, right? So it's just, understanding that trend and where it's going. And I can just sit here and tell you with a giant smile on my face, if you don't jump on the trend in the future, you're going to be left behind um, because it's just, it's just reality, right? Yes. You're going to still have those personal relationships, but again, it goes back to if your competitor is not, or if your competitor is doing that and you're not doing that, most likely you're going to have a better chance of taking business. And so that's just the reality. 100%. Yeah. It's, it's so well said. And I, I just, I love to say social media is, word of mouth at scale. Yes. And because you post some content and you're always giving content away and talking about different, you know, things, one of those things is going to be a pain point for somebody, a surgeon, a physician, some, another salesperson that can, you know, Hey, I saw this guy on LinkedIn. You ought to talk to him, doc. Sounds like he's, you know, exactly. Could, could be a completely different company that they work for, but that happens. It's word of mouth at scale. Bam. And Gary says it the best. If you're not on social media, you don't exist to our world. Right, and right. people will be like, well, I don't agree with that. Well, I don't care what your thoughts are. It's just the okay. reality of what it is, right? Because it's like, how can I go talk to people from England, from India, from Australia? They would never know about me, but through social media, they do, right? Yep. That's what people just don't understand the impact. And even if let's just take the world out of it, just your local area. Guess what? Unless you're going to networking events. You're not, it's hard to meet these people, right? Compared to, guess what? You can go share a post. Like I just had a post 
again, never brag so people understand. I just had a post that got 20,000 views. Yeah. When is the next time I'm ever going to get in front of 20,000 people? I don't know. Maybe never, right? Probably not. Yeah. But by just a post, you can get in front of 20,000 views, right? So that's what people don't understand. And the last thing I want to post about that is, especially if you're going to be posting about products and things you have, where most people make the wrong is they're going to be selfish and see, talk about the need that they're trying to be filled compared to what Eric said. What's the pain point of the person you're trying to talk to? Exactly. Yeah. Find that and fill that and then you'll have success. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you if you're sharing your company's product graphics that they send to you, that they allow, nobody's going to pay attention to that. If you say, Hey, is this something that you want to address in your practice? Because you have a, B and C and patients coming back saying this, let's talk. I think that's going to get a lot more traction than feature a feature B feature C and people just go, and they swipe and go on to the next thing. Exactly. A hundred percent. It's all about attention. I, I love it. I love it. Eric, again, man, I really appreciate you taking time to, to meet sure. with us and just, again, just share your insights because you have so much, you're a true veteran. And again, the thing I love about you is, and I just have to say this because as being a young dude in the industry, you know, a lot of times we try to look up and we find veterans, but I just talked to someone the other day where I've talked to a lot of veterans in the future or in the world. They, they hold their secrets tight. They haven't yeah. actually, they have a, feeling that's the younger guys trying to take it from them. Right. But then this is what we always talk about is if you're good at what you do, you continue to provide value. You're not worried, right? You're just, you're building, you're building up while you do it. And you're an expert on that. And that's why I just love having you on the show and being able to, to be able to have you on our platform, because you've been someone who continues to put out great content and continue to help people. Because again, it's you and I have had this talk off air, just trying to help as many people as we can. And yeah, guess what? When you provide value and you help people, good things happen. And so that's what I just love about your, your platforms and what you're doing, but would love for you to just take a second. Where can these people that are going to be listening? Cause you already addressed a lot of the things they're going to ask, but where yeah. can they find you and possibly reach out? I know LinkedIn possibly, but if, is there any where out on LinkedIn and where else do you have any platforms? Yeah. So um, obviously you can find me on LinkedIn, Eric Anderson, there are some other Eric Andersons out there. So uh, you can also take a look at medicalsalesrx.com and virtualsalesrx.com. Another way to get a hold of me there. And I'm going to do something also that I always do. Text me. My number is 904-377-7173. 904-377-7173. If you need something, text me. I'll help you any way I can. I love that, man. The one thing I just say to every single listener that's always listening, don't be a weirdo. Don't be a creep. And the last thing I always say this, because this is something I always just, I've shared it with you guys all the time, but still people will not listen is don't first text, ask Eric to help you get a job. We already know when you guys are reaching out, we know why you're reaching out. We understand that. But to just be like, I just literally got it. Just checked my LinkedIn right before this call. Hey, want to break in? Know of any jobs here that you can help me get? Like, (laughs) okay, right? And again, why the reason I'm just going to end on that is, it just comes off lazy. It shows that you're not a go-getter and that you're not going to do it. And right away, that per- like me, I would never help that person because how about you do the work and how about you do it? Because guess what? This industry, you're going to come into it. It's not you're just sit around and do nothing. You're actually going to have to put in the work. So guys, if you guys are looking for a true expert, someone who's been in it and also has ran his own distributorship, has been a district manager, has hired, feel free to reach out to Eric because he's a wealth of knowledge. And if you haven't, please go follow him on LinkedIn. Um, him and Matthew Ray Scott, they put out awesome stuff. I follow both of them and it's just a, an awesome community that they're building there. So Eric, really appreciate you coming on the show and just sharing your knowledge with us. Yeah, absolutely. Jacob. I love what you're doing. I, I truly am humbled that you asked me to come on. I, I'm grateful that you asked me to come on. I've loved helping people and just keep doing what you're doing, man, because you are a, a, I, every time I see one of your posts come through or one of your videos, I'm like, man, just, just keep killing it because you're, uh, you're, you're doing it, man. I love what you're doing. Well, thank you so much. That, that truly means the world. It's always nice to get the support to help balance out the, the messages that we also get in the DM. So it, it's, <laughs> yeah, well, the, the message in the DM, sometimes I'm like, oh good. I'm doing something right because this guy hates me. So exactly. that's exactly, <laughs> exactly. I love that. But no, I really appreciate you saying that. I appreciate the support. And you guys, if you're looking to break into medical device sales, please feel free to reach out. We have the course link in the description. Uh, If you haven't, give us a five-star review. And if you can, go write a review on our podcast. It helps us grow this channel so we can go impact more people. 
But again, if you haven't, make sure you go follow Eric. Go follow his channels, help grow his community as well. Because again, it's just a bunch of guys just trying to help as many people as we can, make a positive impact and help you all have a great career in this awesome industry. Until next time, we'll see you. Peace.